The plan in the next two years is more than 700,000 people. Last time I checked, there's not that many places for rent, but apparently this will all magically change. Well, everything's going to magically change, and we should start by putting signs up at all the immigration ports. Abandon all hope, ye who enter here. <laughs> because I think this budget is a complete admission of defeat, Paul. I mean, basically, right, we can't rely on anything Treasury points out, and my bet is the surplus will actually be bigger in two months' time than the $4 billion put forward. But we've baked in a whole bunch of handouts, record handouts to people, whether they're deserving or not, but they're all out there still complaining that it's not enough for them, including Linda now, who's got $100 million for local government to employ 200,000 people around the country, and she's saying, oh, you know, we can't put the potholes in the roads and they haven't given us enough here. I bet you not one ratepayer will be paying less in local government taxes as a result of this extra money. It is just a spendathon, Paul. We've got deficits as far as the eye can see. They're, they're, that's never going to change. You've got governments attacking the golden goose that's made this slim deficit uh, or surplus possible, the mining industry. You've given them $2 billion to an experimental hydrogen program, which is backed <laughs> by billionaires who don't want to put their own cash into it. You can just go on and on and on. This is a, a disaster budget for Australia because we're going to live with this for generations to come. They've given up any hope of really any fiscal sobriety. There's too few people paying taxes in this country. And you know, the ABC did a story tonight, Paul, I'll finish on this. ABC did a story tonight on JobSeeker. There's a million people on JobSeeker or the dole as they call it in this country. And yet businesses close at lunchtime. They can't get staff. Every backpacker in this country can get a job somehow. Every Indian student can get a job somehow. But we've got a million people on JobSeeker who are unable to work. And then we've got another five million on some sort of disability benefit. This country is cooked. Yeah, I mean, certainly the increase in welfare as a percentage of the budget and health going backwards, um, that's not good by anyone's uh, standards. But, Linda, more generally about this budget, uh, I spoke before about the average Australian. The determinant about whether the lady between 30 and 39 gets anything out of this budget is whether she earns less money than her husband and if she does earn less money than her husband and uh, the kids are in childcare, there's something in it. If she's 50-50 or leading uh, the income in her household, guess what? Nothing. Well, let me come to those vulnerable communities, Paul. We've spoken at length during the pandemic about how councils were having to increasingly provide food and other services for our communities that we hadn't done in the past. And so the increases to single parents, to those receiving rent assistance, these do matter. They make a difference to many, many Australians and they will help local governments to provide the services in the community that we do in a better way because we're not having to focus so much on that increasing population of vulnerable Australians. And I take you up on the point that this might not do something for uh, the average Australian woman's bottom line. What it will do, though, in local government is invest in our services that we provide. We provide those libraries. In many cases, we provide childcare and aged care at really affordable oh, li rates. We are oh. being funded to provide these important social services, and that's really critical for the future. And to Corey Bernardi's point about ratepayers, uh, let's just look at how much local government funding we receive now. It's about half a percent of Commonwealth taxation revenue. Under the Keating government, it was up over one percent. So you shouldn't as receive a proportion, any. You're, you're a creation. Well, you, know, you and I can disagree you're a creation on of that, state and I'm government. sure you'll get you, you have uh, drag lots queen of social story media time. from you're my local empires. Every about one that. of your CEOs gets hundreds of thousands of dollars. You are just... You're the, you're the loss in the profit and loss statement. Let me assure you of that. We need some profits in this country. Uh, speaking Corey of... Corey Bernardi, if you think that people having their rubbish collected and providing services for children is only an economic loss, That's what loss, they pay I'm their rates for, for, Linda. Linda... That's what they pay their rates for. They don't need more to pay more taxes so that you can build empires and have drag queen story time and, and complain about, you know, not having a big enough staff around the place. This is nonsensical. We are overgoverned in this country. We are overtaxed in this country. We haven't got enough people actually 
going out there and working because we're fostering people. What business is it of local government to go out there and start feeding people? I mean, when did we get to this point? And you're boasting about it as some sort of, some sort of uh, treasure that we should be grateful for. So they be, should be starve, Corey. For. This is, is that what you're proposing? Insane. The no, things that's, that were that, funded tonight... That is tonight. not the case. It has never been the case in this country at all. It is ridiculous. The, the private enterprise can do it. Tonight. And get Woolworths and Coles using their surplus stuff. And let me tell you, there is a safety net for every Australian in this country already. And the problem is... Everyone wants more. All right. they, no matter how much you give them, they say, we want more, including you and your, your mob, sorry, at uh, in the local government section. I love you guys. I particularly love, Linda, when uh, Corey Bernardi was being used as a swear word. You, 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 I, I speak fluent Linda and Corey Bernardi, Corey Bernardi. Uh, anyway, <laughs> thank you very much, guys. Do appreciate it. Now, an incredible, bl yeah, incredible blink if you miss it moment in the budget was small business. Remember how many people they employ, how much tax they pay? Well, here are the whole, I think, 44 words about small business in the budget tonight. In this budget, we also back Australian small business with a $20,000 instant asset write-off, a new small business energy incentive to support investments in power-saving assets, and new help for small businesses to adopt and adapt to digital technology. Wow. Again, the stones on this bloke. I hereby announce tonight $20,000 instant asset writer for small business. In the last budget, there was no cap on it. So they have taken away unlimited, they've turned it into $20,000 and then they've announced it as if it's help.